Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Marcus and today in this video I will share with you how to design and animate this kinetic typography using Adobe After Effects. So let's go. The first thing to do is setting up our composition. Let's name it kinetic type, be nice. And let's make it 1080 by 1080 at 30 frames per second, 15 seconds duration and press OK. Then go to the top menu and double click on a rectangle shape tool. So it creates a rectangle at the same size as our composition. And then on the rectangle contents, let's go to the rectangle path. Right click and convert it to Bezier path. Let's press Ctrl or Command D to duplicate its shape twice. And let's turn off the new copies, just for now. Now let's select the text tool and let's write something. I will write B. And fit the text nicely into our shape. Then link the text into the shape layer and that's it. Now let's select the path 1 from the shape layer 1. This part is essential and can get confusing, so pay extra attention now. Let's go to Window and select Create Nulls from Paths. And let's select Point Following Nulls. This will create 4 nulls, one in each corner of your square shape. And these nulls will control the shape points. Great. Now let's right click on our timeline and let's create another null. Prepare yourself, this will be null city soon. And on this new null, let's name it temp and let's select our four nulls that control the shape and the text layer and link them to the temp null. Great. Now select the temp null, press S for scale and reduce it to 33%. And after that, delete the temp null. And right click again over the timeline and you guess right, let's create another null. And let's name it Control A. And once again, link the shape controlling nulls and the text layer into this new null named Control A. And by now, you must be questioning yourself, but why Marcos? I will promise, I will explain this later and it will make perfect sense. But for now, let's move the null Control A to the top left corner, moving the shape and the text, as you can see. Great. Now let's turn another shape layer on and repeat the same process. Select the path, go to window, select create nulls from paths, click on points, follow nulls, and then select the text tool, write the other word, create null, link the corners and the text into it, scale it down 30%, create a new null, and this time name it Ctrl B, link the corner nulls and the text to it, and move it to the lower right corner. This was a bit fast, but it's the same process as before. Now it's time to turn on our last shape layer. Let's select the path and go to window, Create nulls from paths and select point follow nulls. Now from now, things will be a little bit different from before. And to help to see this shape a little bit better against the other shapes, let's change the color of this shape just for now. And let's move it down in the layer stack so it's under the other shapes. Cool, now using the nulls of this shape, let's move them into the corners of the other shapes and match them as best as possible. This next part is a little bit annoying to do, as we have so many nulls now, but it's super important, so again, pay attention. Using the Pick Whip tool, we need to connect the top nulls with their respective bottom null. This way, the null Ctrl A and Ctrl B will also control the diagonal shape. Now it's time to tidy the project a little bit. Let's select all the shape corner nulls and let's select the Shy switch. Turn the layers off and activate the Shy button, so we don't see these nulls in our comp anymore, leaving us with only the control nulls. But guess what? We're gonna make another null. Right click over our timeline and go to New null object and let's name it scale control and let's move it out of our composition. Still, with our scale null selected, let's go to the top menu and go to effects, expression controls and select slider control. So this slider will be controlling the scale of our control nulls A and B. And to do that, we need to add a small expression into this nulls scale properties. But before we do that, with our scale control null selected, let's press E to open the effects properties and let's open the slider control effect. Great, now let's apply the expressions to the control nulls. Select control null A and press S to open the scale property. And while holding Alt key, click over the stopwatch to open the expression editor. And let's start writing our first expression. Let's create a variable and name it controller. This variable will equal the slider effect of our scale control null. And don't forget to put your semicolon. In the second line, let's open brackets and write controller, comma, controller, close brackets and semicolon. This expression links the scale of a layer to a slider control, so the slider value directly sets the scale. Great, now let's do the expression for the control null B. Select the null, 
press S and habilitate the expression editor. The first line of this expression will be precisely the same as the control null A, so we can copy and paste it here, although we need to change the second line a little bit. Instead of the brackets, let's add 200 minus and another one 200 minus. This expression also links the scale of a layer to a slider, but in a reverse way. As you increase the slider value, the scale will decrease. In simple terms, the first expression makes a layer growth or shrink directly from the slider. The second expression makes the layer do the opposite of the slider. As the slider goes up, the layer size decreases, and vice versa. And this is why we deleted the temp nulls in the beginning, after we scaled them to 33%. Because if you had linked the temp nulls with this expression, they will scale back to 100%, making the layer way too big for our composition. And then this effect wouldn't work correctly. Well, I hope this was easy to understand. Now it's time to starting animating this setup, so let's go. Let's go to our scale control null, mark our first keyframe in our slider and change the value to scale the shape as much as we want. And let's use the control nulls to adjust the shape's position when scaled. Then move the deadline needle and change the value again to make the other shape bigger this time and adjust the position again. Then move the timeline needle again and copy and paste the first keyframes to make a loop animation. And before we adjust the animation speed, let's just add a loop expression. Holding Alt, let's click over the slide control stopwatch. Then let's go to the expression library and go to property and select loop out. Now let's make a quick adjustment to the animation speed, select the slider keyframes, click on the graph editor icon and select the keyframes one more time, make them easy and ease and adjust the curves to make them more attractive. And that's it. Let's change the middle shape to white again to match the colors of the other shape. And we finish. Now we have an excellent kinetic type motion. This may look complicated with all the nulls and expression, but having control of the scales with just one slider is worth all the work to set up this system. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and learned something cool today. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.